Innovation is the specific tool of the entrepreneur. Those are the words of legendary business author Peter Drucker. On It's My Biz, we meet small business owners with clever ideas that are big on potential. Make your vote for small business and join us on Ned Bank's big show for small business. In tonight's episode, a young entrepreneur with an interesting website-driven business gets advice from three brilliant thought leaders. The head of small business marketing at Google South Africa, the founder of one of the world's most successful business incubators, and the author and speaker who's voted as having the most significant impact on business in South Africa. Tonight's small business owner is Shahid Abdullah. I went to find out what goes on behind the scenes of his website-fronted business. Tyus, what's your today? Good day. Hi, it's Andile from It's My Biz. I've just placed an order with you. We have received your order. We are on the way. While I've got you on the line, why don't you tell me what life was like before Tyus.Sierra today? I'm originally from Lesotho. I studied in Lesotho. I did my high school there. Came to Johannesburg, did my university degree in entrepreneurship. Um, and. There I saw a lot of opportunities and with people being as busy and, and Joburg being the financial hub of, of uh, Africa. So I've always wanted to come back to Joburg and, and, and the Gauteng province and see if I could look at any opportunities that were available to me. So I went back home, did a little bit of research, started a small company. Um, I was selling tires at the time, did it for a year or two and I decided that um, and tires at Zero Zero Mobile Fitness was the way to go for me. I saw another opportunity in Johannesburg where um, people don't have the time to go to fitness centers and that's where tires at Zero Zero started from. And what were your biggest fears? It would be a, a, something difficult to get out there, to get people to recognize, people to understand uh, the concept. That was my biggest fear, that uh, would it catch on or not. Okay, so describe this business to me. So Tires.co.za, we are a mobile fitness center, we'll come out to the customer wherever they are in the Gauteng region at the moment. Um, we'll go to them, fit their tires, uh, balance them on site. It's difficult uh, for, for, for us to get financing. I mean, I'm just out of university, I've got no assets, no security that the banks can hold. So to finance somebody like me, it's, it's very difficult. What are you hoping to learn from our thought leaders though? I'd like them to, to give us an insight into our businesses, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Uh, just an outside view on, on how or what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, where we should be looking at, what we should be doing correctly uh, to grow our business. I mean, it's a great concept and um, it's difficult to do it without good sound advice. And here he is, tonight's small business trailblazer, Shahid Abdullah. They've built some great brands and businesses and have a wealth of knowledge to share. Let's introduce you to tonight's legends and leaders. My name is Clem Sunter. I spent a long career in the mining industry and then subsequently formed a small consultancy with a young woman called Chantal Ilbury. We believe that the best way to run a business is to think like a fox. And so we do strategy and uh, facilitation sessions for small business. My name is Craig Wing. I'm Head of Small Business Marketing for Google South Africa. My primary role is to help small businesses understand the value of the internet and how they can advertise their business online and make use of digital marketing. I'm Alon Reyes of Reyescorp and I like to speak to entrepreneurs straight. Tell them how it is, why it is and what to do to make it better. 
It's over to our small business owner now to present his business case to the thought leaders. We'll hear from Shahid after the break. Get free banking for two years and practical support services with NetBank Startup Offer. Get free banking for two years and practical support services with NetBank Startup Offer. Hi, I'm Shahid Abdullah from Tires.co.za today. We're a mobile tire fitment center, so we go out to the customer, we fit and balance uh, the tires on site. Um, they order online from our website, and we will then process the order and go out to them wherever they are. I don't like the model right now. I think the model will not scale at all. If you look at the pricing and look at your, how the, the pricing structure works and your overhead, I can't see how you can make money. You've differentiated yourself in terms of personal service and price, so you're saying you're cheaper than the big guys and you come to, to them. But when you work out how that model rolls out, it, you can't actually create profits by doing that right now. So I would like to look at remodeling your, 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 your structure. Do not compete on price. Do not compete on personal service. So I'd like to be able to start with your website. And I think specifically around the customer journey. And I think this is vitally important because for a lot of small business and entrepreneurs, the first step is the hardest one, which is really understanding what is it that your customer goes through. Now let's assume that your customer somewhere along the line hears about you. Right? The first thing they'll do is they'll go to your website. So let's start over there. Looking at your website, you've done some, you've done some things which are correct. The first thing that you have done is you've integrated a great uh, functionality for search. That's primarily what your business is, is to find tires. There are, however, a number of things that you aren't working on. Right? For example, above the fold, which is basically the term when you log onto your website, what is the first thing you see? There's some stuff below that which is a big problem for users. So the user experience isn't great. The big thing for me, the big glaring error, was the difference between the number at the top and the number at the center. There's inconsistencies across that. But let's focus more on the search functionality. No doubt the aim of this business over here is to drive people to find tires. And if you put in all those specs and find a tire, you do actually find um, a user path where you actually don't have tires. Now that's a huge problem. Because what that means from a user perspective is if you select a certain combination of tires and tire sizes, you may come to essentially a no results page. That is really, really bad. Craig, can I come in there and, and talk about what, what I saw on the, on the website as well, was there were spelling mistakes. Correct. See? And for me, as, as somebody who comes onto the website and sees that, it gives me the perception that this is a Mickey Mouse operation. Absolutely. And, and so I think you need to take more care in terms of how, is, how the website is perceived by a potential you know, user. I think that's a great point. I mean, it is, it is the starting point of the journey. It's the start of a relationship with your user. That's the first thing they're going to judge. Your website, in addition to a few spelling mistakes and some grammatical errors, um, you've got different fonts, you've got mm. different font sizes. Mm. It's very distracting. There's also no consistent color palette, if you will. Mm. And that detracts from your brand. And I think that's the second conversation to have about your brand, what does it really stand for? Alon spoke very really strongly in, the first, uh, in our first sign bite in terms of um, how do you compete with your businesses? And whether you compete on price, whether you compete on anything, the first thing people see is your website. Mm. And straight away, a, a site that doesn't look professional mm. says you're not professional. Mm. Absolutely. I think the, the important thing to think about right now is whether you use the convenience as a way to charge or not to charge. And I think small businesses always are in a dilemma whether they charge for convenience or not. I think you should charge. I would pay an extra bit for somebody to come to my office to do it, so I don't have to go on Saturday to do, do the extra. So I can ne therefore make more margin, which makes the business more viable. So you need to think a lot about um, if you're going to fight this, this war on price or on convenience. I think one of the things you're going to have to do in terms of your brand is to make that whole argument about how the work-life balance is very important and you know most people at weekends want to concentrate on life as opposed to work and going and sitting in some center having tires put on mm. isn't exactly part of the life side mm. and you can solve that mm. for them I think you should make a really big thing out of that mm. if you come to a big corporate and say to, to them you know <coughs> you'll get as a corporate a, a discount which you'll pass on to your employees and here's the upside for you, Mr. Corporate, is that your, your staff are not going during lunchtime and then taking the extra half an hour because it took too long. It's an added bonus to them, it's a benefit to them. And you, can, and you get a volume a distribution of your, your brand and, and they get 
and upside too, so everyone wins. I think that's a that's for me. If if I were you, I'd be hitting. You know, I I still use. I know you're very much into the the this. I'm still into this <laughs> knocking on doors. You know, I'm a little bit uh, old-fashioned that way. <laughs> Look, but I think, Alan, you, you lead to, to a great point over there, and it's more about what is the true value of this business. Mm. And I think looking at, at, at the way this conversation has gone, the initial sense that I get from you is if I were to say to you right now, what's the, what makes this thing different to everything else? You'd say to me, it's mobile. It's a mobile fitment thing. We go out and we go do something. Convenient. It's convenient, right? right? But how much of that can you actually protect? Mm. So how much of that is really something that you do mm. that if I today start my own business, mm. my own mobile fitment business, I can not do better than you. Mm. How do you protect that and what makes mm. it so much better that stops someone else from doing that? Mm. What we identified would be a, a better uh, strategy to get into that is actually go to the insurance companies and offer this mm. service to them. Uh, capital and financing, that is what, wh where we, we, we stumble um, and, and that's where we, we have a problem going forward. Because it would be easier just to go to an insurance company, tell them if your client is stuck on the side of the road, we will come and service them in the Gauteng area. Mm and um, then we charge the insurance company and they, or they will pay for the service. I've, d I've done strategy sessions with so many businesses where they have ignored the power of their website. Mm. Yeah. And it's just free, it's frozen, and as you rightly say, it's a nightmare to actually find out what the business is about or, and who to contact. It's just amazing how companies don't put the same energy into their website that they do into their actual service. Correct. But even worse is if I, if I were your competitor and I went onto your site, which, which I did, you don't even say that we'll beat any quotes. You say even a notional pricing. Like you, you've opened yourself up for, for me to attack you because now all I do is if I want to take you out of the game, I get every single one of my, my team to now go and get a quote and get you to beat it and I'll take you out of business because they know the margins you're buying at. So they'll just bring your margins right down and, and big businesses can afford to do that. And if they really want, if you start to irritate them, yeah, they'll really, really, they can, they can take you out of the market that way because you've committed to the lowest price. And, and, and that comes back to the point of convenience. That is your critical differentiator vis-a-vis mm. -vis the big guys. And so, you know, you're just going to have to think so much more about how you can live the whole convenience side, but equally how you can promote it on your side. I want to touch on one go completely to a, a different side, which is how you got into this business. And I really want to touch on this because it's very important for me um, as somebody who works with entrepreneurs on, on a daily basis. In your bio, I understood that this was something that your father uh, gave you insight into. Very often I find with businesses that are adopted, by somebody else's passion, somebody else's <coughs> idea, don't have the same vuma as somebody who's come up with the idea <coughs> and built it themselves. You need to introspect and find out if this is indeed something you're prepared to go and spend hours and hours and hours of doing all the stuff that we're telling you, uh, you know, to think about now, whether it's really something you want to do or this is something your dad wanted you to do. Because if it's the latter, I, I don't believe that this will become a long-term su success. Yeah, if it is something you're truly passionate about and see yourself as building a big business around this and you're passionate about this convenience and the service and building this empire, and it's not your dad's dream, but it's your dream, well, then pursue it. But if it's not, you think about what, what you really would like to be doing. The other point is, honestly, Sahid, is, is that these big guys, if you are anything like a success with this, they're going to do it themselves. A more important thing is to work out what you're passionate about and link that into your business. That's rather spend the time linking your passion to the business than, than trying to uh, find passion within the business. Find passion uh, in tires. What are you passionate passion. about? What am I passionate yeah. about? Yeah. I'm passionate about building and creating businesses uh, that are sustainable yeah. and, and differentiated. Yeah. Um, that is, for me, what entrepreneurship is so, about. So in other words, it's not tires it's necessarily. It. You could be moving into other areas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With Absolutely. the same. I'd like to build businesses that people will see value in and then buy it out and they get into the next. That yeah. is my passion. Mm. Um, I like building and, and, and coming up with creative ways of doing things 
and then uh, seeing it forward. My point to you would be, you know, usually people start a very small business like you have at the moment with the one vehicle, with friends or family. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing if you look at a lot of the big, uh, you know, computer giants, they started out as, you know, a circle of friends with similar ideas. And I, I just throwing that in, that maybe there's somebody that you know, either as a friend or a member of your family that could, you know, you could bring into the business. Some frank advice given to Shahid about the dangers of competing on price, getting the online functionality right, and that non-negotiable factor, passion. When we come back, the thought leaders give Shahid their top tips. Get free banking for two years and practical support services with NetBank Startup Offer. Get free banking for two years and practical support services with NetBank Startup Offer. Read about this business in the Business Report this Friday. Plenty to think about, Shahid. I mean, Alan said you shouldn't be competing on price and service, but rather use convenience as your differentiator. And then Craig made some good points about how you can use your website to drive business. And, and Clem, of course, uh, mentioned the opportunities you have in the corporate market. Lots there. Absolutely. Great insight, great advice. Much appreciated. Let's hear it from the thought leaders. Here are your top tips, Shahid. Shahid, I think you need to be looking at a couple of very important aspects in your business. Number one, how you're differentiating your business. Do not differentiate on personal service and on price. It's the two killers of small business. We've spoken about actually differentiating yourself on convenience. So convenience, convenience, convenience. Number two, I think uh, you need to relook at your website in terms of its usability and get rid of those spelling mistakes and make it pretty. It tells a lot about who you are to the client who's coming onto that website. So please make sure that, that your first impression is a good one. Thirdly, let's talk about your passion. I'm not convinced this is your passion, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to be in this business. Find a way to link your passion to this business. Once you've found a way to link it, you'll be able to have the impetus to push through those dark days as an entrepreneur. Otherwise, never give up, push through, and I look forward to seeing you on the front cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. Shahid, I think we've covered a lot of stuff today. For me, there's a few key points I came across. The first one is brand. What is it that you stand for? What is it that you really believe makes tires.co.za so much better than everything else? Is it apparent upon the first time that a user logs in and has a look at your website? Does it flow all the way through to your delivery service, to customer follow-up, even up to testimonials, do they really understand what the brand is and what the value proposition is? The second thing is really looking at what Tires offers from a user perspective. Can they really, really see what is it that you offer these guys and is it something that they want? Convenience is key, but I don't fully believe that this is part of your strategy. And that's the last part that I want to touch on. Your strategy needs to undercut everything that you do. Your website is vital to your business. But a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs believe that putting up a website drives traffic and they'll have um, so many calls and so much business it's not possible to keep up. That's not necessarily true. Your website is part of your business. Your strategy needs to run through your business. Everything needs